whisper a prayer in the morning. Oh, whisper a prayer at noon. Oh, whisper a prayer in the evening just to keep your heart in tune. wonderful Wednesday as we come yet again with another word on Wednesday from the Park Avenue Missionary Baptist Church. It's so good to be with you on today and certainly we always want to say thank you for tuning in and certainly we are in for a treat today. We have a wonderful word that we certainly are praying that God will bless you in so many ways and so I'm going to uh, ask of you right now to Get your Bibles out. Let's get ready for Bible study. Give you enough time to get your Bibles, whether it be on hard copy or whether it be any uh, techn technology apparatus. We want to make sure that we get, get our Bibles present as we get ready to go into the Word. I'm going to pray, and then we'll give out our scripture, and then we'll be on into our lesson. Lord, we come now in the name of your Son, Jesus. We thank you for your Word. We thank you for all that you do in, the, in our lives as it relates to giving us a mind, giving us the ability to read, and certainly we ask now, Lord, that you would remove any and all distractions as we get ready to go into this time word. And we pray, Lord, that you would give us insight, certainly give us interpretation, give us all that we need, application, give us everything that we must need, Lord, to do this word. This holy word may hide itself in our hearts that we may not sin against thee. And I pray, Lord, that you would use me as the vessel to teach this thy word. I can't do it without you. I need you right now. So I pray, Lord, that you would allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be acceptable in thy sight. For, Lord, you are my strength, and yes, you are my redeemer. And it's in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. All right, let us, let us go into the gospel as recorded by Matthew. Matthew chapter 7, and we want to look at two verses today in that particular chapter. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. When you have it, say amen. All right. <laughs> I heard y'all. I heard you. You said you got it. Amen. I'm glad y'all are right along with me on today. And certainly we're looking forward to the time that we can come back together, even on our prayer band and our Bible study noon services. That we, I mean, 11 o'clock services. We're looking forward to a start date as we continue our soft reopening, but we certainly look forward to that opportunity where we can be together again, yes, even in that setting. All right, all right, Matthew chapter seven, beginning with verse 13. And oh, by the way, I'm reading from the New King James Version, and it reads on this wise. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. I want to read that one more time. Jesus is writing. Jesus is, 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 is the author of this particular passage that we're looking at today, and he says, Jesus says, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to light, and there are few who find it. I just want to use as a topic, as a subject matter for today, traffic jam on Broadway. Traffic jam on Broadway. Many of you as well know that traffic jam results from an overcrowded condition 
of people traveling in the same direction at the same time. It's a heavily populated route that's taken because everyone seems to be headed in that way. In our text today, Jesus speaks of two ways, each with its own beginning and each with its own ending. In these two verses, Jesus talks about two gates, two ways, two destinations, and two crowds. So after several days of preaching, Jesus climaxes this great and powerful sermon here, known to us as the Sermon on the Mount, which actually begins with Matthew chapter 5, and he's coming to a close here in Matthew chapter 7. So he climaxes this great and powerful sermon by leaving the people with a choice, two ways of life and two ways into the kingdom. Well, let's see. First of all, Jesus says that there are two gates. He says, enter by the narrow gate. Why? Simply because wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Amen? Now that word enter is a verb. It's a command. It's a mandate. It's imperative by the straight and narrow gate. It's, it's a very imperative. This gate, when he says the narrow gate, the narrow gate, he says this gate represents the beginning to the way that leads to life. The narrow gate is suggestive of the way of righteousness. And then it says also that uh, this is a restricted and it's also difficult to enter because one of the things that makes it difficult is that first of all, it requires self-denial. Remember Jesus said in his word that if any man come after me, he must first what? Deny himself. So it's not about your choices. It's not about what you would like to do, the way you want to do it. It's about following the ways of Jesus. So in order to understand what he means by when he says it's difficult to enter because narrow is the, uh, uh, is the gate that we choose and we should be, uh, he says it requires, first of all, self-denial. Then secondly, not only does it require self-denial, but it also requires obedience. You must be obedient to the word of God. You must be obedient to the Lord. Obedience is much better than sacrifice, so we must realize that we have to obey the commands, and certainly we must obey all of the word of God. Not only requires self-denial and obedience, but there's no room for self-righteousness. You have to abandon your own righteousness, what you think is right and what you feel is the best way according to you. But everything should be based upon the word of God and the direction that the Lord is leading you. And then only the humble and the true believer will be able to uh, make it on the narrow, through the narrow gate and those who completely surrender to Christ. See, some people only surrender a little bit of their time, a little bit of their treasure, a little bit of their talent to the Lord because some, some, of you, some people are still enjoying the lifestyle that they're living. Some people are still enjoying the sin that they're committing. Some still are living in those backslidden ways and unfortunately, it's difficult because you must understand you have to be stripped of sin and you have to be stripped of self and you have to be stripped of the ways of this society because unfortunately you have to make sure you make up in your mind that first of all I've got to deny myself I got to be obedient I have to abandon my own self-righteousness I have to be humble and certainly I have to completely surrender my ways to Christ. And that is that we would make way straight, narrow gate is the suggestive of the way of righteousness. So he says, first of all, enter by the narrow gate. Amen. Now on the other hand, 
Jesus says, for wide is the gate and broad is the way. Now, this gate represents the beginning to the way that leads to destruction. I'm talking about the broad, wide gate. It leads to what? Destruction. Wide gate, Broadway is synonymous to and suggestive of the way of sin. Sin is like this. It's easy to enter into sin. It's easy to do wrong. It's easy to commit sin. Sin also uh, is a life of at least resistance. You don't have to do very much to ward it off. You, you just fall right into it as if there's no resistance whatsoever on your part. It doesn't require giving up anything because it's just whatever goes, whatever, whatever comes with me. And also, you can enter with no sacrifice on your part. You don't have to give up anything to sin. It's just whatever you feel like you want to do, whatever you choose to do, that's the way it's going to be. And then, and then believer, believe, you can believe whatever you want to believe, and whenever you want to believe it, and the way you want to believe it. There's no guidelines, there's no restrictions, there's nothing. So we realize that the wide gate, Broadway, is synonymous to and suggested to the way of sin. This is where sin is. It's easy to enter, and it's the life of least resistance. It doesn't require you giving up anything. It doesn't cost you nothing. You don't have to make no sacrifices to sin, and you believe whatever you want to believe. If you believe it's right to do it, you'll do it. If you believe that I can do it, you'll do it, regardless of what the Word of God may say. So we must understand in that way. And then he says, broad is the way. Whereas we've seen two gates, now let's look at two ways. First of all, he talks about broad is the way. He says, enter by the narrow gate. And then he says, for wide is the gate. And then he says, broad is the way that leads to destruction. There are many reasons why entrance is wide. And first of all, uh, we need to understand these ways uh, are so much different. Now, you don't have to make no changes to your lifestyle. They're not necessary. You don't have to make not one change because there are many, amen, who go in by it as it relates to the broad way. It takes no biblical intelligence to enter in the broad way. You don't even have to know one scripture. You don't have to understand one of the books of the Bible. You don't have to have no biblical intelligence. Also, uh, this entrance is, there's no faith required, no effort, no wisdom, no guidance, no structure. You make up your own rules, amen. You believe what you want, you do what you want. And this role, which is considered the broad role, this basically is like everybody is easy to find. Everybody's doing it. Just follow the crowd. And you know, you hear people say this so many times. Well, everybody's doing it, so I might as well do it too. It's almost similar to the, so many of our young people today, especially with this COVID-19 situation as it relates to the constant uh, 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 commanding and efforts of trying to convince people of the importance of wearing masks when you're out in public and around uh, people and in, in various establishments. But so many young people just, you know, ain't nobody else doing it. And so I'll do, I'll just follow the crowd. Well, you know, I remember, I remember my mother making a statement to me years ago when I was young and I was calling myself trying to be, you know, Mr. Know-it-all and had, had it going on and all that. And she used to tell me something about, well, if they jump off a bridge, you're going to follow them. And that made a lot of sense because sometimes we follow people and we don't even know why or for what reason we're following. So it says real simple. And make up your own rules. You believe what you want. You do what you want. The road is easy to find because everybody's doing it. So let's just follow the crowd. And church folk doing the same as or more than folks in the world most folks just come to church on Sunday 
and sometimes they just worship on Sundays just to satisfy a religious conscience. But it's amazing how one can feel so quick, so guilty about not coming to church, but don't feel guilty about sinning against the ways of the Lord. Amen. So we must understand real simple that entrance is wide and it leads to destruction and many who go in that's how we discover the difference. Now on the narrow way, it says, narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And then it says, Jesus says, there are few who find it. Now, the reason why there's only a few who find it because the requirements are great. My, my, my. There's no room for deviation. You can't just make it up. You have to follow the book of God, the word of God. You have to follow this book to the T. There's no deviation. You can't make up. You can't interpret it what you want it to read. The Bible is true. The word of God is true. And it does not need your interpretation or your alteration. It's difficult to find because very few seek it. Very few people really seek the narrow way. Many delay and detour this road because they do not want to give up certain lifestyles. People still want to live in certain ways and do certain things and they're just not ready to give up certain things in certain ways. So they continue to live and follow in those ways and then it says the only way that they can see through tears of repentance and eyes of faith. You must be always willing to understand that repentance is key. Uh, and we got to have faith. You got to have faith. And then it says, seek it wholeheartedly. One of the things you must understand when you're following Jesus Christ, you can't do it halfway. Or I think I heard in a song where it says 99 and a half just won't do. That is so true. You must give 100% to the Lord wholeheartedly. Whatsoever you do in word and deed, do it wholeheartedly and to all to the glory of God. And listen, it's too narrow for unbelief, too narrow for pride. There's only room for humility and submission. And you have to enter alone. And it sort, of like, it sort of like reminds you of those turnstiles you see in certain places where you go like in rides and amusement parks and so forth, where you can only, one person at a time can go through the turnstile. And it just seems like, unfortunately, there are few who find it. And I want us to understand the importance of realizing that we got to make a very strong effort to deal with and be a part of this narrow travel. It says, broad is the way that leads to destruction, difficult is the way which leads to life. And this life is everlasting life. Only the righteous shall enter into the eternal life. It is the gift of God given at the end, a gift those who have been set free from sin. And I know one thing for sure, we looked at two gates, two ways, two groups, two destinations. Revelation 20 and 15 says, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's broad in the way that leads to destruction. And one of the things I want to make sure we understand as we come to a close in this wonderful lesson, stay on the straight and narrow. Do what the Word of God instructs you to do. Study the Word each and every day. Take time. Spend time alone with God. And then don't just be a reader. Don't just be a hearer. Be a doer of the Word. And I guarantee you, you will fall right into this particular scripture of the peace where Jesus says, narrow is the gate 
and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Because one thing for sure, we want to spend eternity with our Savior, and we want to be with him for and throughout all eternity. Well, that's our lesson for today. Stay out of the traffic jams. Stay away from that Broadway. Always remember, seek ye first. Amen. The kingdom of God and his righteousness, all of his righteousness. And these things, all these great things that he will provide shall be added unto you. Put God first. Keep God first in your life. Amen. Let's close with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word. And yes, Lord, we want to be a doer. We don't want to just be those who read and hear. We want to be those who actually do exactly what the word tells us to do. And Lord, we want to stay on this straight and narrow road. And we do not want to journey off into the broad way because there's so many people that are on that road right now and it leads to nothing but destruction. But certainly, Lord, we pray that we may be on the road that leads to life. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can. Come on, let him know. I give myself. Give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. What would happen if a generation embraced this? Come on, tell them. Here I am. Here I am.
Can you? 